Ever since Wizards of the Coast launched D&D 5e, they've mostly kept things in the Forgotten Realms, the fairly vanilla, standard fantasy setting that most people can easily understand. But since doing that, I've seen more and more people really want something fresh, something different in terms of a setting. Add some weirdness, some strangeness, mix things up a little bit. Now, in previous editions of D&D, especially 2nd edition, there's a lot of really great settings. My favorite has always been Planescape, though I know a lot of people love Dark Sun as well. But there's so many other ones. But converting 2nd edition into 5th edition can take a lot of work. And besides, um, you run into the issue where those books are rather expensive. Buying them on eBay, they kind of go for collector's prices, which are not cheap. So today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking at a variety of settings that you may not have heard of. And these settings are available now, and they are relatively inexpensive, at least compared to some of the older ones. Now, most of them are designed for what's called the OSR, the old school renaissance, which means they have very minimal stat blocks. So you can run them as is or flesh them out a little bit to convert them to 5e. But in general, it's really not too difficult. And the amount of imagination on display really makes up for it. If you've been watching my channel for quite some time, you've probably seen me review these books in the past. But if you're just getting into the hobby, this can be a great starting point for you to get an overview of some of the craziness that's really out there that flies under the radar and most people don't see. So number one is Yoon Suin, The Purple Land. This book takes a fantasy amalgamation of India, China, Nepal, and Mongolia and packs it into these 300 pages. But what it does is it doesn't give you a canonical version of Yoon Suin. Instead, the, almost the entire book is random tables, meaning that as a GM, before each session, you use all of the tools and tables in here to generate your own personal version of Yoon Suin. It's a generative system that creates an entire world as you need it. It's packed with content in terms of NPCs and factions and locations and dungeons and adventures and so on and so on. There's a giant um, river reminiscent of the Ganges. There's a huge um, city called the Yellow City. There's open steps. There's huge mountains full of crystal dragons. There's so much strangeness and flavor packed into this book. It's a completely unique book, and I strongly recommend it, and it just doesn't get enough love. Number two is Hot Springs Island. Hot Springs Island actually comes in two books. So we have this one, a field guide to Hot Springs Island, which is an in-world artifact that you can give to the players. And then for the GM, you have the Dark of Hot Springs Island, which is this big book detailing every hex on this strange, enormous hex crawl. Hot Springs Island is a tropical island, and it is a hex crawl, um, where it's broken down into hexes that you can travel through. So it's an open world wilderness exploration campaign, if you will. Players use this field guide and they can read through it because it's an in-world artifact. It's full of journals and monster descriptions and so on. And they can get a sense of what this island is like and how they might approach some of their encounters. Meanwhile, the GM is using the Dark of Hot Springs Island to actually describe what they encounter. Players use the knowledge that they have to try and overcome the difficulties that they run into. There is a ton of factions here, all that have interwoven conflicts with one another and things spiral out of control in very interesting ways very quickly. It's not only a unique book, it is beautiful. It's one of the most highly produced, luxurious items that I own in terms of RPGs. I strongly recommend it before this thing goes out of print. Dark of Hot Springs Island, make sure to check it out. Number three, Voivodia from A Red and Pleasant Land. So this book, which already looks a bit like a fairy tale book, is essentially a encapsulation of all of the themes and tropes of Alice in Wonderland, but wedded to a vampire war in a strange Transylvanian country. The entire country is broken down into squares like a chessboard that have been raised and lowered like skyscrapers. And you can travel across this massive city essentially because the entire land has a castle built under it full of tombs and dungeons that you can explore. It's a weird book full of a lot of beauty, flavor, blood, and paradox. Things are never quite what you expect them to be, but the book keeps you on your toes and is packed with absolutely gorgeous illustrations, some of the best that I've ever seen in a role-playing game book. And besides, the actual book itself is a beautiful artifact. You could almost use it like a field guide to a Hot Springs Island and give it to them as an in-world artifact, though it might spoil a whole lot. What's wonderful about A Red and Pleasant Land is that it just doesn't tell you this is a strange place full of paradox. Instead, it gives you specific tools and GM techniques to make a Lewis Carroll-like world come alive while frightening and challenging your players at every turn. Number four, Veins of the Earth. 
Banes of the Earth is the first book that I've seen that makes the underworld of the Underdark in D&D actually playable and makes it genuinely terrifying. The book uses accounts of people who have actually done spelunking to get a sense of the terror of crawling through small dark spaces in the blackness, of your light running out and not being able to escape, of the weird things that crawl up from the underworld. This isn't a generic system of tunnels full of normal monsters. Everything here is strange, unpredictable, and unique. When you throw one of the monsters that this book is full of at your players, they will not know what it is or how to react. They will actually have to deal with it and discern that on their own, which is the essence of exploration. It's also full of a lot of great tools for designing your own Underdark, how to lay out the passages and connections between things, how to run weird factions. Plus it has a ton of randomized caves, meaning that you can put lots of locations that are all unique, even if you're just traveling through caves underground. It's definitely one of the most interesting and captivating RPG books that I've read in a really long time. It pulls you into its atmosphere and doesn't let you go. And that's something that you can't say very often. Number five is the forest of Dolmenwood that can be found in the zine Wormskin. Now, back in the 70s, zines were a much bigger thing. It was how different groups of gamers kept in contact with each other before the internet, essentially. But in recent years, zines have really made a comeback, at least in the old school D&D sphere. And that's because it's so easy to publish them and distribute them via a lot of online sites now, like DriveThruRPG. Now, what Wormskin does is instead of building an entire book around this setting, it's releasing it in like magazine issues, essentially. Each one has descriptions of more hexes within the forest. It gives you more monsters. It gives you more adventures, more NPCs, and the world slowly builds itself out. Now, the setting of Dolmenwood is a forest in the mythic forest tradition of the Grimm's fairy tales or any of those old stories. There's a sense of darkness and danger surrounding it, but also a sense of whimsy and playfulness. And the contrast between those two is what makes it so charming. You have things like hags living on a lake who will eat you alive. You have stuff like monks guarding a, an old abbey that's falling to pieces and are holding a horrible secret down in the basement. You have stuff like a witch who has enchanted gigantic gingerbread men to be her servants and will pummel you to death with their sugary fists. It's stuff like this that makes Wormskin completely unique and makes Dolman Wood just an entrancing read every time a new issue comes out. Well, that's it, guys. Those are my five top settings that I've been exposed to so far in D&D. There's a whole bunch more out there, and there's a bunch of really interesting ones coming up this year. For example, uh, we have Operation Unfathomable, which is a mythic underworld exploration uh, setting. And we also have uh, the Driftwood Versus, which is going to be a wave crawl in the Lamentations of the Flame Princess universe. The old school scene is producing settings and content at an amazing rate and of an incredibly high quality that can easily be adapted to your 5th edition D&D game or to Pathfinder or to anything else that you're playing. If you enjoyed this video and you want to check out these books in more detail, I've done long form detailed reviews of them. Feel free to check them out and see if you like them. I also have lots of other reviews and map making tutorials. So that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you guys later.